All right, so our three lines of defense. You have your barriers. That's the first line of defense. Then you have your second line of defense, stop or slow things down. And then finally, if something breaks through all of these, so it breaks through the barriers, first line of defense, it breaks through the second line of defense, slow stop and stop things down, stop and slow things down. Then you get to your third line of defense. You do not want anything to break through this line of defense because if something breaks through this, that means death. Um, so you want this third line of defense to hold strong and true. So when you look at all these, the first two lines of defense are part of your innate immunity. They're nonspecific. So the barriers and stop slow things down, they protect you against anything and everything, not a specific bacteria or virus. Then you get into your acquired um, immunity, which is the third step. So this is specific. You're going to make certain cells and proteins that are going to specifically attack certain bacteria and viruses. All right, so our third line of defense is our lymphocytes. Lymphocytes is a fancy name for our white blood cells that search, destroy, and remember. The two main ones are B cells and T cells. So B cells first. Your B cells, B cells are floating around in your blood and it's their job to be the memory of your immune system. So when a certain bacteria, let's use chicken pox as an example. Let's say you get the chicken pox, okay? When the chicken pox virus invades your body, you make B cells that are going to remember the uh, chicken pox virus. Um, the way they do that is these little things here. These little things actually remember what the chicken pox virus looks like, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so you make B cells that remember what a certain bacteria or virus looks like, and then you make B cells that also make antibodies. Then you get your T cells. Your T cells are going to be um, used to turn on your immune system. Uh, so when we talk about acquired immunity, that actually has to be activated and turned on. You actually have to turn on your immune system to make specific cells to fight against certain bacteria and viruses. So here, T cells, you make some T cells that actually help simply turn on your immune system, and then you make other T cells that are the search and destroyers. So some T cells go through your body looking for cells that have become infected by a virus and destroy those cells. So that way those cells can't make more viruses and spread the virus. And then finally you have antibodies. Antibodies are not cells. Antibodies are actually proteins that have been made by B cells. Okay? Um, it's a specific type of B cell I'm going to talk about in a moment. But antibodies are not cells. These are actually proteins. So your body makes these proteins and it helps protect you against specific bacteria and viruses. Uh, each antibody is extremely specific. It'll only attach to a certain type of bacteria or virus. So here, um, let's say this is the flu virus. So shapes and stuff don't matter. Sha well, shapes, I shouldn't say that. Shapes do matter when it comes to this. Um, but the shapes I'm using are very simple. In reality, they're going to be a lot more complex than this. So let's say this whole thing, all of this here, is one flu virus. Okay. Well. Every bacteria, every virus, every fungus, every parasite has unique protein receptors on the outside. So what you see in red here are the protein receptors. And what antibodies do, antibodies are made that bind specifically to those protein receptors. So they have to match this. So there's an antibody. Notice the shape matches there. So the, the shape of the antibody ma matches the shape of the protein receptor on the surface of the virus here. And you make a whole bunch of these millions of antibodies that are there to cover up all those protein receptors. Okay? And that's going to basically slow down or stop the virus um, and help the B cells and T cells out in uh, actually getting rid of that virus. All right. So one question you want to make sure you can answer is how are nonspecific and um, specific defenses different from each other? Like what makes them different? How can you tell the difference between a specific and a nonspecific defense? And the last thing we need to go over is going to be antigens and antibodies, a little bit more detail. So antigens, don't confuse antigens with antibodies. Antigens are protein receptors on the surface of bacteria and viruses. So any, any protein receptor that is not yours, that your body doesn't recognize, is going to consider, be considered an antigen. So your immune system knows what your protein receptors look like, 
anything else that's not your protein receptor is automatically considered an antigen. And you know what antigens are. They're just simply the protein receptors on the surface. So all of these protein receptors here would represent antigens. They're on the surface of bacteria, virus, fungi, parasites. And your immune system uses that to recognize that that is not you. Antigen is not you. Don't confuse it with antibodies, though. Antigens are the bad guys. Antibodies, your body makes antibodies. So, uh, example here. Antibodies are very specific to each of their antigens. So, you make antibodies that will bind to the influenza virus here, and they work. But if you try to use those antibodies on a, a different flu virus from a different year, because the flu virus, it mutates a lot, and it's... Uh, antigens, its protein receptors change. So if you try to use this antibody for this flu virus against this one, it doesn't work. If you try to use it against the streptococci bacteria, it's not going to work. If you try to use it against the polio virus, it's not going to work. So antigens and antibodies, they're very specific to each other. Their shapes have to match in order for the antibodies to work. So you make antibodies that are specific to a certain type of bacteria or virus. All right, so exactly how do they work? You make millions of antibodies. Um, B cells will make millions of antibodies. And what those antibodies do, once they attach to the protein receptors, they prevent the bacteria or virus from attacking your cells. If it's a virus, it prevents it from being able to access your cells. If it's a bacteria, it kind of forms like a dog pile, it makes it very difficult for the bacteria to get around and be able to do stuff that it needs to do. Um, it also clumps bacteria and viruses together. So as antibodies start to attach to the outside onto the antigens, it causes a whole bunch of the bacteria or viruses to clump together and makes it easier for your phagocytes to come along and destroy them. And then finally, it's like a little red flag that says, hey, right here, this thing that I'm attached to needs to be destroyed. So it flags for destruction as well. Now here is what antibodies are more uh, closely look like here. Um, so they're like little Y-shaped so this in purple here, this whole thing, you don't need to know all these parts. But this little thing in purple here, that is an antibody. So the antibody is a Y-shaped thing. And all antibodies, see where it says C, 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 all those, that's the same in every single antibody. It's this part at the end here that changes. So that's what changes to match specific antigens. So again, this is all one single, this whole Y-shaped thing is one single antibody. And so we can see here how these actually work. So if this is a pathogen, and you can see the shapes here, um, the shapes have to match. So antibodies have to match the shapes. And so there are little Y-shaped proteins floating through your blood that will attach to the antigens.